I'd like to welcome everybody here for the uh, Sixbourne Area Committee. Um, we've got some visiting members online with Councillor Jackson and Councillor Ingleton, and we also have Mike Bendorf from KCC here visiting. Uh, the officers that are attending, we've got Peter Sutcliffe from Communications and Policy Manager, and Janet Dark, who is Policy Engagement Officer. Just a bit of housekeeping to start. Fire evacuation. Uh, please be aware that the, the evacuation procedure is as follows. There is no test tonight uh, of the alarm at this meeting. If alarm does sound, please leave the building as quickly as possible, taking <coughs> any possessions with you. Go through the, the fire doors, which is obviously here on the left, and await any instruction to re-enter the building. Should anybody re need assistance, can people please let the officers know prior to actually starting this meeting? Let's start through the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. Yes, we have apologies from Councillor Simon Clark. Declarations of interest. Non-pecuniary interest uh, on the trustee on the municipal part of the team. Maybe the issue comes up on that. And also a non-pecuniary interest on the member of the Bill Bridges High Street Society. So, so just ask the first one. I didn't quite hear the first one. Uh, the trustee on the Milton Country Park. Milton Country Park, thank you. So they're not pecuniary on that. Non-pecuniary on the Milton High Street. Is it um, but I understand I still get out to speak on an issue regarding that? Okay, thank you. Yeah, Janet, I'm not the real bill come to the trustee. Do we need to do so? Well, I'm the real Thanks. Before we go further on to the agenda, I want to just rearrange the agenda slightly, um, simply because I think we want to spend more time in looking at the priorities of what we see the priorities in, in the city of area. So item eight, uh, matters arising from previous meetings. I want to move it up the agenda to follow uh, a few of the reports, if committee members are agreeable. Sorry, Mark, can you speak up? The, on the agenda, item eight, which is matters arising from previous meetings, I just want to move up the agenda slightly to be, become item seven and the priorities to become item eight. So the idea being that we can spend more time actually on looking for priorities of uh, what we see as the priorities of, of sitting board. If our members agree to that. Thank you. Uh, minutes of meetings on the 23rd of February 2023. People have to say that that's uh, a record of those minutes of, of meeting. Is there any matters arising from it? I wasn't involved with this, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I agree. agree. And the minutes of the meeting on the 17th of May. Which agreed. Agreed. Just want to go through uh, councillor introductions, really, because uh, a lot of us are new to this. Um, and I was just want people to say who they are, which rules they're from, um, how long they've been a councillor, and if they've got any other committees they're on or posts that they do, which may be relevant to the people here. I mean, I'll start it off. Uh, if I'll start it off, so uh, my name's Mark Last. I'm 
the area committee chair. This is my first term as a councillor in Swale and have been a councillor before in Medway. Um, not only am I doing this role in the area committee, but I'm also on community and policy and resourcing committees. We have a wider range, just not this one round. So if I go to Derek, could you? Yeah, um, Derek Carnell, uh, Vice Chair of this committee. Uh, I've been for four years and have served on this committee before as Vice Chair. Um, so um, on the committee of policy and resources, so I'm Chair of Licensing. And I'm Ken to the World Council. Jelly. Um, Tim Chisholm, I've been the board. Um, this is my first time to council. Um, I'm on community and regeneration committees. Simon? Not here. No. Tim. Well, Tim Gibson. Um, I'm the member representing, um, or one of the members representing, Royal McWall. Uh, this is my second stint on the council. Um, I chair the policy and resources committee uh, and I'm also the council leader. Charlie? Charlie Miller, I'm the Chalkbrook councillor, was elected on May the 5th, as well as this committee I'll set it on environment and planning. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Angie Rouse and I am and councillor that I'm trying to tell you, the community elected on the main bit. I've also been on planning, licensing, and the environment. Yes. Um, hello, my name is Karen Nixon, and I'm councillor of the Timber Road Ward, and I was elected this year. I am serving on a uh, planning committee. As well as housing and health, which I'm vice chair of, uh, joint transport and Tony? Uh, we elected uh, mine this year. I was on the planning committee. I'm vice chair of licensing, um, also sit on the standards committee and the Medway Green, which I'm Ashley. Uh, Ashley Wise, um, councillor for Pemsley, elected this year. For the first time I also sit on policy and resources and regeneration. Thank you all for that. Um, you'll find in the agenda pack um, the achievements report um, and this is going to be presented at fourth council tomorrow evening um, it's a requirement of the area committee's terms of reference uh, to produce this report um, as we have a, a host of new councillors since the election in may uh, we thought it would uh, be a good idea to bring this report to each of the area committees um, as it gives a bit of background into um, uh, the, the, how the, the committees were set up um, and how they've developed since their inaugural meetings in September 2020. Um, as the report explains, one of the objectives of the administration formed in 2019 was to diffuse power among members and improve public engagement in decision making and area committees were set up to help achieve this objective. In addition to the ward uh, committee members who've all introduced themselves this evening um, for the area, um, members of the public and representatives of different organisations, voluntary groups, etc. cetera, um, they're all invited to come along to these meetings and to take part in the meetings. They provide people in the community with the opportunity to speak direct to their councillors uh, and raise issues that are a concern uh, in the area. The report sets out some examples of issues that have been either resolved or brought to the attention of the organisation responsibly. Um, they're also a useful way to provide updates on projects uh, coming up in the area and to consult with the community. 
Um, the first year of the ARI committees took place in the pandemic when it was not possible to meet face to face, but the ability to attend meetings remotely proved very popular. So when it was possible to start meeting face to face, a lot of people were keen to continue attending meetings remotely. So it was decided to trial hybrid meetings uh, in community venues. The OWL um, was therefore purchased and providing there's reliable Wi-Fi at the venues, the meetings can be attended either in person or remotely. For the first three years of the area committees, they were allocated funding. They each set work plans which were used to develop priorities and criteria for awarding funds to projects and activities. The report sets out in detail how the funds were operated and lists how a total of £534,000 worth of funding was allocated across the four area committees over the three years. Uh, it, they were allocated to a wide variety of, of projects overseen by both external organisations and internally led by Swell Borough Council. As part of the budget setting process for 23-24, members had to consider how to deal with the budget gap, which unfortunately resulted in funds not being available to allocate to the four area committees this year. The, uh, the agenda, not the next one, but the, the item on priorities that uh, we'll come to a bit later, um, that will look at how area committees can still set priorities without funding. Um, I don't know whether Chair or um, your comments they want to make on this direction. Uh, any members of the committee got any comments on the, the report itself? I will say this is just to note that this is the situation. Tony? I'll just like to say, I think, this is just how. The announcement uh, is the funding that we had at the time. So it was really good to see um, funding going into fairly degree um, projects um, within the community. And uh, it was nice to see um, it was particularly much like better time according to the, the regions, um, etc. So, you know, it, 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 it did a lot of good. And, uh, and it was nice at the time. In that area, but we had the money available to enhance the areas. That's the thanks, Chair. Um, yes, just it's a bit of information, really. I noticed there's a mention about ponds here at Fire and Rescue. Yes. <laughs> um, as Chair of Milton Creek Country Park Trust, and um, we are working with the uh, fishing people for the two lakes, one in the uh, Newman Drive and one on the Country Park. Um, they have disbanded, um, so there's nobody maintaining them, so it's become a bit of a problem on who looks after them and so on. There's an, an extraordinary AGM to so get that sort of going again, yeah. uh, but I just thought to, I'd mention that in case it comes up for anybody, particularly if there's emerging leaders. And I'm, I'm sorry if I could just make a yeah. note. Don't know this one. <laughs> um, I noticed a bit about East Filters. I've been with the police a few times in the High Street, as I'm sure some of us, some of us have been. It just astounds me that we're still allowing them to be driven when they are actually illegal and dangerous and nearly run one over the road on the road. So I think everyone that knows me knows how I feel about these scooters. I mean, you'll have opportunity later on to voice Sorry? that. You'll have opportunities later on to voice that sort of part. Yeah. Uh, this report is really just to be noted. Um, um, Councillors are happy just to note the uh, need for the yeah, report. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Can we move on to um, matters arising from previous meetings, which is a threat challenge? 
and you'll get the rule done. Oh, um, yes, um, so the this is um, a summary of issues that have been raised at previous meetings. Um, it either um, gives an update on progress on um, an issue that has not yet been finalised, um, or some of the, the issues they have been finalised, and it just gives gives you uh, the information there. Um, I don't know if everybody's read the report uh, and if they just want to say if they have any comments on any of the, the updates, they're all quite uh, self-explanatory, whether you'd like us to go through them one to one, one, one by one. Okay. Has anybody got any comments? Members of public, you can just go through one, each one by the okay. public, like the Certainly. Um, so, item one, Sheerness Sitting Ball, sorry, Sitting Ball Tennis Club. Um, so, the update um, is talking about the uh, Lawn Tennis Association um, funding, um, and that's the progress on what's happening at um, Milton Recreation Ground Course. Um, and uh, currently, offices are awaiting timescales for delivery of the project, so there'll be a further update on that at the next meeting. Um, sports facilities in the area, um, the built uh, facilities strategy will go to the September Community Committee uh, for adoption. Uh, following that, any sitting board specific actions can be reported back to this committee. Um, Grace, Great East Hall Pond, um, an issue was raised, um, I think it was at the December meeting, following the, the sad news of children who lost their lives after playing um, on a lake, lake um, uh, I don't remember where it was now, I just have a note of that, but it, just, just asking what um, the situation was in Swale uh, with ponds and lakes. And we can't contact the Kent Fire and Rescue Service, um, the, their education and safety teams to see what education programmes that they have in place. And they are going to... Um, but they haven't yet come back to me. I do keep chasing, um, but hopefully we'll find out what um, education programmes that they, they have got coming up for this winter. Um, so I will particularly push on that so we've got some answers for when the weather gets cold again. Coombe Drive, that was an issue that was raised at this, this committee. Um, and now um, it, it was um, some houses um, on Coombe Drive. They were experiencing problems with vandalism uh, and antisocial behaviour in an alleyway uh, at the back of the houses. Um, and it's been agreed to um, progress with a public space protection order to gate the alleyway off um, following the completion of a public consultation. Uh, an order has been placed for the fabrication of gates and it is hoped they will be installed by the end of this month. Um, heritage issues, that's just, I won't read that out um, as, as you can see it in the report, that's just an update on the conservation area reviews that are taking place um, within this area. Um, Periwin for water mill site, um, that uh, Again, it's just an update, an ongoing update so that comes back to this committee uh, on um, conservation and design team. Um, they're exploring alternative procurement options um, to carry out the works um, at that site. Um, active Travel Fund. Um, some of you may recall that the Active Travel Coordinator came along um, to the February meeting and spoke about uh, the active travel fund tranche for proposals. And although a bid was put in the sitting board, unfortunately, it wasn't successful. Um, so um, really, that, there's no more to update on from that. And then finally, the Swell Local Heritage List. Um, the criteria has been adopted and the procedure document and listing criteria is published on the website um, and there are invitations for nominations um, that they were sent out to local parish councils um, 
to, to nominate, uh, and that is live until the 26th of June. Um, that's it. Thank you. There's much any questions. Yeah, any questions at all? Any update? So, sorry, Jan, if I can assist in pushing that forward to the FI Rescue Service. Thank you very much. I would appreciate that. I'll forward you the email stream. I've got an email to um, I'm sorry, Jan, I'm with the authority next week. Second. So I'm with the authority, the fire authority, okay. in a couple of weeks I'll at a meeting. So if you thought me as well, I might be. Thank you very much. And the name, whoever you're dealing with, yes. I might be able to. Thank you very much. Very helpful. Thank you, Em. Um, so now we're moving on to agenda item, um, now the eight, but uh, in the agenda cafe, it's agenda item seven. Uh, and this is about setting um, the sitting board area committee priorities. So, as mentioned in the achievements report, um, there's no longer funding available for area committees to allocate to support their priorities. Yes. <laughs> However, each area can still agree what the main priorities should be, and these can be fed into and influence corporate priorities and objectives in the new corporate plan. So one of the first tasks for the new council is to create a corporate plan which will set out what the council wants to achieve over the next four years. This will help to make sure that council resources are allocated in an accountable and effective way. Um, area committees are, are being asked to have an input into the corporate plan at an early stage, outlining their aspirations for their individual areas. The aspirations of this area committee could be issues that are the responsibility of Star Borough Council um, or things that are the responsibility of external organisations which the council can try to influence. They could also be ambitions the area committee would like to work towards in the future. When considering what these aspirations um, should be, it's important to bear in mind the challenging budget position, which is likely to continue over the next few years, and the capacity of Swell Borough Council to deliver them on top of the previously agreed workloads. Um, we're going to be doing something a bit different this evening. Um, we're going to ask you in a moment to split it into groups of about four or five to spend some time talking through what you feel those priorities should be. Um, I'll hand round some sheets which have got four questions on, so if you could focus on answering those questions. Um, and um, then we'll feed back at the end. Uh, and um, if you could nominate one person from your group to feed back. Um, before we, we do that, I don't know if the chair or Phil have got anything they wanted to add. I would say when we split into groups, it'd be about 10 to 15 minutes for you to discuss it. And then obviously one of you from that group would be uh, a spoke to what you feel are your three main priorities in sitting board. Uh, and what I would also like to do is mix the councils up with members of the public so that they can listen to what uh, local residents have to say. So. Uh, and also uh, for anyone online, I will put the questions up on the screen. And if you have any suggestions, please just type them in the chat. Um, and as we say, we're, we're really keen for members of the public to participate in this just as much as anyone else. So, um, yes, if you'd like to... Split yourselves in the and come round with the questions. We have three friends, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just one.
Right, can we can we start to go through the groups, please? What I'll do is I'll literally just go around the room. Uh, so I'll start here to my left. Uh, the spokes for so I'll get spokes for the game. If we go through the four questions, can you um, just give feedback as to what your group felt? Right. Number one, safety and CCTV. Uh, speed limits 20 mile an hour. Grass cutting and antisocial behaviour and barking. Two, noise, potholes, buses. Three, community police, swell road cleaning, will be done, this. And four, CCTV bins and pollution. At that time. <laughs> right. when you say, so what's your response to the area that affects the wall, Tony, on question one? So, so what? When, as we're going through the four questions, have you answered all four questions for us in one hit? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, don't be bad reading us for it. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, you should have been adopted. Yeah. In group two, who's the spokes? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that for us, but to be honest, we, we focus mostly on four because, you know, there are the three questions on the page of that for us. So I'm actually just going to keep back on that. Sorry about that, Chair. Um, but our three priorities are um, AS, ASP vandalism and policing, which falls within part of question two, which is the work of um, the police, uh, but also falls partly within our three centers, so our council, um, stuff to do and social behaviour, and so how we work with people, providing um, constructive youth activities. Um, second priority is a focus on tourism, leisure, heritage and hospitality offerings, uh, how we can link all those together to make sure that when people are coming to attractions or um, visiting the town and people live here as well to know more about them. Um, and thirdly, how we can sort of bring um, rural elements more into the town as well, so that people get to uh, enjoy both our industrial parts and also our rural links and connections. So one of the examples that was referred to in this group is an asset like the country park being a real, um, you know, uh, asset for the town. Um, how we can bring other elements that are like that, which are good for the environment, biodiversity, but also help build our identity as a Kent town that people want to uh, enjoy living, visiting and working. Thank you for that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I think I love this slide because you know, I apologize now. So I'll go through the first question first, if I may. Okay. So the issues that we um, looked at that affect our wards, graffiti, vandalism, and linked to without this of interest for every collection. Parks and open spaces, which also links in graffiti, the vandalism, and other uh, things. Uh, homelessness, we thought, was um, uh, something that has been brought up. Um, housing, again, not enough of it. Um, and we looked at speed limits and vehicles. Um, and you see what is going on in traction with the country mile an hour. So, question two, which was the issues that affect residents in the ward that pull out, pull within the responsibility of the external partners, um, and trade with the usual suspects. So, it was crime. Schools, schools, school transport, public transport, GPs and health services, and leisure services. So, question three 
what changes would you like to see to improve the life of our residents? Um, we looked at more patrols, whether it's police or um, more to do with City Hall, which links in with the other group, with looking at heritage and how much we have out there that people don't realise. Um, trying to improve um, the lot of the homeless in our community. And we also looked at perhaps we got lots of empty shops in City Hall and especially the Forum. So perhaps looking at whether those can be used as a, something a community asset. Whether it be pop up units or that sort of thing, don't you know? So, question four, which is our top three issues, um, was housing and employment, antisocial behaviour, looking at ways to tackle it. And we put down community united, so bringing everything else in leisure, um, health, mental health, because when you look at everything, it has an impact on everything you do, so the holistic approach. So if someone's housing or their employment is better, then their lives are better, their children's futures are improved, and it just it snowballs from there. So everything that we do and everything that we can help our community for isn't just going to be focused on one area, it will branch out into others. Thank you, Well, we've had a very successful evening, Mark, actually, because oh, I personally have I had to fight and wrestle Derek, Jen, and Linda for the <laughs> sports best job. So, and I got it. There we go. Um, probably cut into the chase, really. Um, for us, antisocial behaviour uh, is a real key thing. Um, fly tipping, litter. Um, planting green spaces and grass cutting. I'm speaking too fast, Janet. Time to slow down. Um, and parking to the outside schools um, uh, in the broken parking too. Um, what issues affect residency award for the responsibility of external partners? One of the key things for us was potholes uh, and general condition of the roads. Uh, trees in a number of areas can become overgrown, not just with the canopies at the top, but also the bottom. Um, and so it's creating problems with pedestrians uh, and those perhaps with mobility scooters. And the dreaded and hated e scooters. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what changes would we like to see that improve the life of residents in the future? So, addressing antisocial behaviour. Um, perhaps using CCTV, uh, more police community engagement, um, and the top three issues that you'd like your area to take forward. Um, Anti-social behaviour was right at the top of the tree for us, uh, and looking at um, increasing CCTV cameras, um, the conditions uh, and maintenance uh, of the roads, uh, Improvement to our green spaces and maintenance of our green spaces. Um, and of course, the, the last one um, was the, the, the parking uh, and the appropriate parking outside of school, etc. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you spoke about the lack of toilets in Milton Recreation Park, especially in the clubs. Change in the vaccine can improve the life of residents in the future. CCTV to monitor antisocial behaviour, which is happening in Milton Beaches. Get that means stated. Um, the fourth question: What are the top three issues we'd like 
for area kits to take the board in the coming year. We send road safety, parking, litter, and flight to And what was the last one, sorry? Flight to May I collect all the sheets just so I can make sure I'm not really missed any problems? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thank you for doing that for us. When I've looked through the notes I've made, um, I listen to what you said. The, the ones that struck me most strongest of all is that around antisocial behaviour yeah. and looking at dealing with that within sitting born, not just taking the, the strategy of CCTV, but looking at more patrols, more involvement, engagement. Um, I think that's come through quite strongly. Also, we want more done, I think, around our green spaces. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, we are really maintaining the, the green spaces as well as we could. Um, and again, I think that's a sort of priority that we, we should be looking forward to, looking forward at. There are, on top of that, obviously, things around transport and people being able to get around swear wider than that. Um, but uh, thank you for that input. And I think we've got some, some good feedback now to be able to feed back to full council and to develop the uh, um, corporate plan. Thank you very much. And we've got somebody online who would like to add into what's been said. Sorry, I've been uh, Sue Petto, you, you raised your hand earlier. Did you want to just speak on this item? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can. Okay. Right. Good. One of the, the main problems is that there's no chat for the public. Okay. So even if we wanted to comment, we can't. We had this um, also on the Eastern Area Committee. So That's if you would. Yeah, I'd like to speak more on your public um, forum as well, because if you want the public to actually attend more of these meetings, because how many people have actually have you actually got there that are a member of the public? About ten. About ten. ten. Okay, that's quite good, because the area um, Eastern Area Committee had no one, and there was only two of us online, and then notice there's only two people online at the moment. I mean, they're not very personally. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak now or do you want me to speak later? Um, speak. Is your comments going to be around how the area committee is set up and run? Yes. And that's probably wise to do that a bit later on, Junior. There's other agenda items that you can speak on. Okay. Uh, and yeah. then. Um, we have got the chat facility in Teams. I've got it up on the screen now. I'm not sure why it's not working for you. Um, uh, we, we could speak about that after the meeting. It could be the device that you're using um, doesn't show the chat facility, but it, we certainly do have it uh, available on Teams. Well, moving on to agenda item 10, uh, this is ish local issues raised by uh, councillors. Um, can I ask Charlie Muller to speak first? Uh, I have two issues to bring up. Uh, Tony, Charlie first. Sorry. Charlie, can you, uh, yeah. do you want to stand up so people can see? Yeah. I'd like to highlight the totally unacceptable example of an social behaviour of the Women's Town Centre, which is resulted in much more disposable with any items being set on fire have all been documented, and although not entirely exclusive, a large proportion of these offences are being carried out by use. Furthermore, the schools of illegal electrical scooters and inappropriate riding of cycles continue to be a great concern. I fear this situation is not addressed as a priority. Confidence of businesses and the wider community will become increasingly more damaged. 
I'm contacted the community safety unit to see what options are open to us. But I would appreciate any assistance that members of this committee can give in highlighting this further through multi agency forums. I do also think that promoting the swelling radio scheme for the community job, the more participants of the scheme will prove to businesses would be a great benefit. Could I therefore ask the chair to support me in helping to push this matter higher up the local policing agenda as a matter of urgency? Thank you for that, Charlie. I mean, I think uh, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, but I think from the public forum just earlier, it's highlighted that we appreciate that antisocial behaviour is going to be a priority for people in Sittingbourne, and this committee will always be pushing for that for the, for the best for the better uh, life of residents in Sittingbourne itself and any other third parties such as Kent or anywhere else we can get that message across, then we will do. Has anybody got anything? They want to add? I can, Tony? I can just come in on the uh, antisocial behaviour part of it. Um, I'm going to zoom this, attach this to it. It's a general issue, obviously, but I'm going to refer to it. If this could be noted, um, there used to be a CCTV camera um, at the corner of Brewery Road and Milton High Street. Then that's what packed up. Then there was two CCTV. Um, they were done away with um, a few years ago for whatever reason. Um, we had issues, particularly um, and two of my residents, the opposite, uh, with the, the wine bar. Um, now, I and my colleague Angie were getting leaflets out last Friday afternoon about five o'clock, and I, my comments were to Angie. Um, this is going to get out of control. I can tell by the noise one. One of my residents emailed me and said, Scuff me a car. Let's get to the point. So I would like, or we would like, to see a CCTV camera reinstated on that post. Now, there, there are, well, at least there are two police records, one at least, where there was a quite serious fight. Mm -hmm. um, so there will be evidence on that. I know this has to be evidence placed, but um, this place wants to be monitored. No one is, I thought the area wants to be, to be monitored properly, even if it's only a full point camera. So I, I, I'm requesting that. Thank you for that, Tony. I mean, I would see CCTV, if we, as I see, what I take away very strongly from here is that antisocial behaviour in City Mall is our priority, and CCTV may be one of those tools to deal with that. Uh, but I think it's it's what we look at in the wider sense once we look at the priorities of City Mall. So would you say that um, we do actually regularly review CCTV across Swale? There are restrictions on when it can be used as we just alluded to there, um, it has to be being used, it can't be there. I mean, it's put up on the left if it's not being used. Um, so there might be reasons why that can win. I can't speak to that particular case, but it's it's you have to justify having it. It's harder because it's a code of practice nationally we have to abide by. But it doesn't mean we can't look at things and work with partners in the place to look, but just to kind of put that out there now that just cameras can end up going if they're not being used. That's the problem. But so it would encourage actually if there's incidents reporting them. Then they will get used. Come back to you. Come back to you. Yeah. Just quickly, I mean, the argument I, I was told at the time of the CCD was in milk. Um, it was basically controlled from when it went to, uh, when it was in Swar before. It then went to Stroop. And they, they don't get to change that. They said there was no, no instance of anything going on. Well, logic tells me that the CCTV. It's a deterrent. Now, as I've seen on this, um, it's, it's gone. Um, so, not saying um, the, the two, um, uh, uh, Councillor Miller and could email me the details that, that you've just um, spoken about, with, especially with locations. I will um, pass that on to Steph Curtis, um, Community Safety Manager. So she's aware and she can feed that into um, the um, contacts that she has with partners. Uh, and um, 
I've got to hopefully get a response back to you. But if, if you could let me have the full details of what you just reported with locations. That would be useful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just to, just to back to Phil, um, I got involved in this a couple of years ago in the code of practice. The law has changed, actually. And the police have a very, very heavy evidence-based uh, protocol that you have to go through to put a camera up and keep them. Um, so, I mean, for new cancers particularly, I would recommend you read that piece of the law and that code of practice so you understand what the problem is of, of putting CCTV cameras. The second one is just a, a question to fill with. Um, how many old guys do you have? The last time I looked, there were two. Um, I couldn't actually answer that because I don't get involved with them. But but I that was last year. Certainly not. not I asked Charlotte, and um, um, there were only two left. Two left, okay. Um, I can probably push them to keep you two going, don't I, sir? Um, I will be able to check that one. It would be useful to know, to be ever honest. Chair, these um, numbers, if, if you do get Will, will they go back to the, their central control? Yeah. yeah. They will, I mean, because they are really, uh, I mean, I, I was just involved with licensing with the fight that happened outside of the night. And uh, I've never seen cameras so clear, and you could spot everyone. Yeah. And the police took all that away for evidence. So they are the best quality going. Yeah. Yeah. What you can get. What you can get. Oh, yeah. You can. Now, I do understand there are difficulties these days with acting CCTV into place mm -hmm. and to, to monitor. Actually, yeah, we are able to invite somebody from the police and perhaps the community safety manager to this area of the community, given that it seems to be an overriding priority coming out of this session. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea to make that an agenda on one of the future meetings. Okay, and just, just sound like that, and I think you were another person. Um, my husband and I meant in, that, that we were desperately trying to get uh, somebody from the police to attend, and it was a case of, well, no, we won't come to your area meetings, we'll engage at another level. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the last time we tried, that, that's right. Yeah. They said they will come to exactly. the central meeting, yeah. but not to the individual area meetings, because they think they said they just keep repeating the same thing, if you remember, John. Yes. And they said they would come centrally. But not to the area. That was yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, for the, the councillors who were here last last um, uh, last term, may recall that um, two of the councillors were on the uh, community safety partnership, mm -hmm. um, and that was because it's sitting board is unparished. So one of the four is. Um, like Calc, which the police would attend, um, this area uh, can't, can't sort of contribute to. I don't know whether um, that that there will be anyone from this area who will be sitting on the CSP. I believe there's a report going to the community committee soon, so that that could be another uh, another um, forum where this that there'd be representation um, to feed in to to the police. Stephanie is the best. Yes, yes. Thank you, Chairman you. Um, I'd like to thank what you said. So I think the three of my deputies these meetings antisocial behaviour is such a huge issue that it's important to all councils, residents, business, everything is affected by antisocial behaviour. So whether it would be um, ideal or permitting that perhaps we need to have a meeting that is solely about antisocial behaviour. Bring all the partners in, invite them in. So it, it is like a mini conference, I suppose, because it is such an important issue and it is something that everybody is affected by. So perhaps we do need to bring everybody into a room and then we're going to have it out. Well, just to come back on that, really, the thing is. All the area committees are going through this process, and it'll be interesting to see what each of the areas bring up as their priorities. But I wouldn't be surprised to find antisocial behaviour being part of that. And if that's the case, I think there's a good ground to start looking at something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to say something? No, I was just pointed to Ken. He's the chair. I believe he's still the chair. 
of the shepherd. Mm -hmm. so, yes, it is. I'm sure it is. Yes. Learning. Um, I don't have a question separate for this one. I'm just going to ask it quite high. Oh, I'll just, yeah. So we, I just want to finish off the um, social behaviour part. Is that the, so everybody felt they've had their say on that? Mm -hmm. The question is coming from Councillor from Tony again. Uh, if you want to ask your question? Right. I've been asked to ask um, why are the broad displays in Milton Regis um, has been paid for by the religious um, society. Um, the issue is that um, sitting on uh, of the floor and um, paid by the Council and Milton Regis Society had to pay for their own. Now, I only have my previous is the point. Um, I understand the precepts that she and his parish and tenant, etc., on parish councils. So that makes it quite strange. Correct me if I'm wrong, but City Hall Town said it's not a parish, is it? No. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why did City Hall Town Saint get paid over last one? There was a real question. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Yeah. Um, so, yes, sure. Yeah. Well, I asked Ali about it, and I understand that the Funds and things have been paid for by the five year contract, which I had two years of run, so it was decided some while ago to fund those. And it's an ongoing thing, but what happens at the end of that, I don't know. Um, but it's only for the ones that are coming in the, the towers and the baskets. Um, all the other areas are, are just they're going to be left, not looked after, because there's no more sitting morning the blue committee. So the really there is, there, we have got a response uh, from Leisure and Health Services. I mean, I don't yes, um, so we, we did ask the, the team, the officers, about this um, as they sort of let us know the question in advance. Um, and um, Swalborough Council fund planters for the three main towns in Swales, so Faversham, Sittingbourne and Sheerness, but there are no funds to provide planters in every area. Um, often um, town and parish councils do provide this for your areas, but as you've said, sitting board is unparished, uh, but also groups such as the Milton Regal Society or Bloom um, do also help. Um, there has been um, access to other funding streams. So last year at the area committees, um, which um, Milton Regal Society did benefit from last year, um, and there, there could well be could be member grants as well this year that you, you could contact um, the, the members for that area and see if they'd be willing to uh, use some of their member grant. Um, the yeah, so the, the the success of this led to the Milton region. So the success last year of um, the, the work on this uh, led to the Milton Regis Society reforming and re reinstating the tradition of the Christmas trees over the shops uh, and their desire to raise funds for wraparounds around the lampposts. Um, but that really just is the explanation as to why it is just the, the, the towns and not other areas such as Milton Regis, but um, there, there isn't the funding, the soil bar accounts, but you could perhaps find funding from elsewhere, from other groups, and so on. I'm not sure. Do you want to come back? Yes, quickly. Um, sorry, there's no way that next year then. Sorry? No way next year then that, that there could be funding put in. Um, 2023-24, there's, there's no funding, no. I, I don't know what is likely to happen the following year. Is there uh, any benefit trying to find alternative sources of funding? Um, it's more centrally for, for the other areas like Milton and... and um, Widgets, sorry Chair. Um, Widgets have been set by the Widgets same process for this financial year, so it would have to be within those existing budgets that we can be found anything. Um, so, but going forward, it's 
councillors will be saying the budget for next year. Um, so we can meet. I mean, I'm thinking that's next. I'm thinking next financial years if we yeah. can find alternative sources of funding. That's we might not be able to do it this year, but whether there are sources that the council can bid in for for other areas outside of city yeah. is that the next financial year? So if if it helps going forward, uh, chair. I don't see uh, any great improvement in the budget process. In fact, I see things not getting covered for us. To be very frank. When I say alternative funding, I don't say the council bonds that funding. Um, yes, I'm what I'm saying is whether there's charities or organisations out there that we can contact and look at doing. If, if we were to hear of anything, we certainly could put um, put you in touch with them. Um, I'm not aware of any at the moment other than what I've said about member grants, but if, if we do hear anything, we can let you know. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, just to say small CVS. So this, they always have a fundraising list, and I suggest we talk to them. They usually have a long list <laughs> of possible funding. Uh, we, we do a lot at the hall and the country. Linda, well, no, she, Linda does a lot. But you of need some to do the fundraising. You've got the Norwegian Society now to fundraise, but the rest of it is all on the city board because there's no more sitting board in Bloom. Yeah. hasn't got an organisation to do the fundraising. Yeah. To spend the time to, to go and dig them out. They are there. Yeah. There are funds there. It's fun but you have to spend a lot of time to go and dig them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as far as the yes, can give us a Does Council not have an officer that would be responsible for so we're looking at that? Um, I'm not sure there is the resource, um, the resource anymore. They have actually green spaces officer that was responsible for us. We've done that. That was only savings. We know we haven't got money. <laughs> But I'm it has gone to places to find from. If we look up some of these areas, but she was there, we could bring in tools that she could arrange for Glenwood to take away the risings and all that sort of coordination. That's no longer available to us volunteers. Thank you for that. Just a, a little suggestion that if have we ever considered sponsorship by local businesses for email lists? And then get an app. Yeah. 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 It comes back to anti social behaviour because I've been yeah. looking at Jack We provided a nice wooden plaza near his facility. He planted it up last year. Nice, expensive plants in the middle of stone. Yeah. And he was so feed up that he hadn't planted it up at any point. He said it was a cheap stuff. Yeah. And I started to him. And when I planted up the square, and they recently did um, listening, I mean, listening to what you're saying, uh, we've said in, in our priorities that green spaces is one of the things that we need to look at. When we uh, look, when we did the three priorities, as I said earlier, not just antisocial behaviour, but also their priority was our green spaces, mm -hmm. and and like you said, it's mental well-being and health, and so maybe there are ways of bringing that in that way. Mm -hmm. and although people see it as a few plants here and there, it does have an effect, I think, yes. on the overlook of, of, of sitting born. And as we've said before about bringing tourism in, I mean, you want a town to look nice. Uh, if you're going to bring tourists in and, and, and there's dirt, uh, there's rubbish on the floor and it's not clean and it's not nice to look at, you're not going to get your tourists coming in. So I think there are knock-on effects here, mm -hmm. not just to say it's yeah. the funding of, of, a, of a few planters, it's in fact having a whole wellbeing effect for, for sitting there. Drive down. So, just um, I don't know if you know, but in the whole East well, there's a lot of um, green space that's been sold off. Uh, down where I live, they... Um, um, a piece of ground that's just been cut, so we put 84,000. Now, if planning permission is given, the houses that look onto the lake won't look onto the lake. And when we tried to make a village green, the area, it was refused on the, on the grounds that it was to do with the developers years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And what's happened now, this company has taken up all those pieces of green and they're selling them off. Whether they get planning and permission 
later on, I don't know, but what annoyed me most about this, Blendwood, we don't own it, but they still cut the grass. And I've asked, I asked last year if they could um, look at the ground we actually own. I still had no answer because they come back and say, well, we've really got to investigate it. But the people we're paying to cut the grass and look up, you know, are actually cutting grass that are developers of some crops. So that's got to be looked into because that's that's money being wasted. I mean, again, I think, I think when we talk about green spaces, we need to look at the breadth of that, just not uh, what we've got, but what we're going to keep and what we could be losing. So I think when we talk about green spaces in City Hall, we haven't got many, and I think we need to concentrate on keeping as much as we've got. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and for, sorry, I don't know your name. Oh, Linda. Michael. Linda, so you were saying? Well, it's not about there, but if you go down through Tenham, they had a whole lot of the nice plants all planted up um, as part of the environmental pollution things with sustainable planting, but they've not been maintained, so we arrived down there and there's a whole lot of dead plants. Mm -hmm. Doing them today. So They were doing them today. Oh, they are, right. It looked, it looked awful and they were PDF yeah, complaining about thank it. Thank you, thank you for that. Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, I just back up David could we've dealt with this uh, together. Um, but as David was saying, and, and you said, yeah, we've got to look after our green spaces. But Derek's point was, and he's got a very good point, this isn't our green space. This is owned, yeah. not by the original developer, and that's part of the problem. <laughs> the original developer disappears into the distance. And we get this with management companies as well, that take over, and then they don't maintain them. And eventually, uh, blame wood, as you say, yeah. end up cutting them because of nobody else. Yeah. Um, but if it's private ground, there's nothing to scale really. And do. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, by that, if we're looking at green spaces and we are play, we are maintaining that green space, I would be questioning why. And then, well, like you, know, you said, yeah, 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 it's exactly what you said, but yeah. I think it's worth calling on it. And the, the other point I was going to make, what Linda said, um, is is um, one of the things that KCC have been pushing, you've probably heard about it, is wild for every, yes? Mm -hmm. um, the speed actually uh, had mentioned it to me. So, on the verges, instead of cutting, you let it grow, becomes wire trapping, and uh, it's tied with bees as well to give bees a place mm -hmm. to go and so on. Um, but the problem has always been KCC will leave and not cut it and let it grow, but somebody else must take on the commitment to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And groups won't. Yeah, you yeah. can't find the groups to maintain it, so you've got this. And unless it's cut once a year and the arising yeah. was taken away, yeah. it disappears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just in from the Milton Reed Society. Um, I don't know if anybody watches Kent online. The news comes through on my phone. But this week, City Hall, which I think should be recorded tonight, was put us down at one of the worst areas in Kent to live because of anti social behaviour. And I think. That is terrible. And that say to us, we really have got to do something, something. Yeah. to us yeah. on social media. I think we're doing Tim, did you want to say something? No, that was just a good one. I'm Sue Petto. Sue, do you want to say something? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I, it's just about tenon planters. Um, I actually help run Tenham in Bloom and they've all been redone today. We've had an enormous problem with watering. So that is the issue. Um, Swellborough Council have cut the funding for Amethyst, so we haven't been able to water them. But the group has been out today and they have tidied all the planters up outside the co-op. The co-op are now um, watering them um, and the rest of the group maintain the others. We have six that we've actually bought and um ourselves and the other ones which was um half sponsored by us and swellborough council we've taken over managing so we are doing what we can here in tenham so i i find that it, it's very difficult at the moment especially with climate change so volunteers are really really important and they're the ones that are picking up from whatever's happening with the budget cuts at swellborough council okay Thank you for that.
Is there any more comments that anybody wants to make regarding local issues? Okay, so yeah, so um, <clears throat> what we'll do is we move on to public forum. Is there anything anybody wants to say or talk about or mention within sitting board that we haven't covered already this evening? Okay. Sorry, I can't put my public hat on now. <laughs> on behalf of Little Creek Country Park, if those who haven't been to it, please come and have a look. Um, and I have to praise the Swarbrick County Ranger, Chris Staples. Um, he does a fantastic yeah. job down there. And at all gone for the weeks, of course. It's a lovely park now, and it's well, well worth a visit. We now have um, a road into the park, so you can park inside next to Greg's. We're going to take away. Now we've got a little bit of a takeaway and drive to spot um, and park your clock inside. So please, those of you of you don't know it, come and have a look. It really is a great place. Yeah. Thanks to Linda and Derek and Tony here. Now, fundraising at the moment, we've had some contributions from the area committee before to build a community hub in the park yeah. um, so that we have inside space as a classroom and as a workshop so we can bring more children, more schools, more youth groups because it is, I mean, it's a fantastic area for the environment and wildlife. We've got so many rare species and we're now yeah. a champion site that's a part of very rare beans. Yeah, we're a champion <laughs> site with the yeah, well, I've trust down within the following week. No, I mean, I've been through the park. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but I, I would like to thank Linda, which you mentioned the community club, just talking about fundraising. Um, we reckon it keep, the price keeps going up, of course, with materials. Um, the last estimate, I think, was 105,000. Yeah. But we have, we have, and we have 78,000. That is Linda fundraising. But also, down to one of the other volunteers who's doing all the drawings, all the work. He's had a horrendous list of problems back from um, building places today. But um, so we've got to clear up. But that hasn't cost us anything. It's entirely voluntary. And it would have cost yeah. tens of thousands to have consultants or architects to do that work for the ground scale. Yeah, thank you for that. I just want to say that in London, the great country park, we've got free parking as well, which is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to charge. Yeah. Sorry, this is what about trustees as well. Yeah, somebody wants to look at that. Yeah. 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 Um, and when COVID came along, we couldn't meet. So, why not? We would like to get that set, or would like to reset up again. It'd be interesting to know what the other area committees have said about public transport as a, something they're interested in. Um, because then, possibly, um, and there's a plan to get some. The two representatives and two of the bus companies, there's only two bus companies at present, kind of, where we're from July the 22nd, there'll be two bus companies operating all the buses in Swale. Oh no, sorry, in Sydney. Yeah. Um, um, there's a couple of local ones operating, probably should But um, so, let's get the light. I'm also involved in a group called Square where we're in an interesting meeting. The chip Thursday, which we had some new uh, member staff from Network uh, um, from South Eastern there. Um, and they were saying they were complaining to people on the um, on the uh, on the island who actually got on the train. And a friend of mine went to the forest ship on Sunday. It took him two by train, it took him well over an hour and a half to get from Sheerness to the forest ship. Because he had to wait an hour for the connection. Mm -hmm. And every time out, and you know, people just said, oh, I'm not bothering. You know, we can't get anywhere. What's the point of what? Because <laughs> every time you come off the airplane, I'm actually guaranteed this. So I've written to 
um, both the two people network where I'm from southeastern I've always been in contact with Tempsey, uh, see if they're prepared to extend their service to Sheerness and the North of Britain, which would be quite useful because it means there'd be great service from the place, you know, there's our metro school and Gravesend and Dartford, where people actually want to go. Um, now, what I'll do, I'm going to, I'll email the two of us to all my information. Yeah, to Janet. Mm -hmm. And if some of them, you can't read really wrong to people. Um, and I said, we'll look at that. And if 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 an area has got the same problem with public transport, then it might be better to get the bus companies to meet with the other areas, the other area communities. So I can probably do what you might be doing the uh, police. Yeah. Might want to get so well count all the councils and any other interesting people around and we have to think about that as well. Mm -hmm. Just uh, for information, we are aiming for the September meeting to put uh, an item relating around buses. Yeah. Uh, and we are trying to get bus companies to come along, as well as people from KCC, who are polo holder for transport. Yeah. So we can get more around the, 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 the table discussion. I'm also, uh, although he doesn't know it yet, going to talk to Ken Ingston, who's the Sheerness equivalent of this. To see whether they want to be involved, because uh, no, I think it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, it does um, lend itself to it's a wider issue than just sitting there. Yeah. I was, I was in the Western area of the media, and it was one of their top drives. Everybody was concerned about transport buses. I mean, I, from a personal perspective, I know that from Sheerness, you can no longer get a direct connection to somewhere like Maidstone or Canterbury. You've got to come into here and change buses. So we need, it's an urgency for Sittingbourne and for Sheerness, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I, I presume you've spoken to Roland Roland? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, we, we have had... Uh, Sorry, Roland is uh, chalk. Yeah. I was going to say, we had, it did come from a resident. It was something that a resident wanted to highlight at a very short notice uh, to the meeting. Uh, we could have included it tonight, but uh, as when I talked to Janet about it, I think it would be better to get more people around the table to discuss yeah. it, rather than just it being from this committee. Can, can I um, ask, possibly, that when you start discussing the buses, you talk about community buses as well. We we'll look at uh, KCC um, has a business uh, BS, BC, business service improvement plan, and they're getting uh, they're getting funding from the government, but it can't be used on existing services. But it can be used on community buses. I mean, that's that's partly why we're looking at putting that agenda item on to September yeah. because we can bring those people together yeah. and look at a strategy of how we can improve transport within with certainly within buses. Within the city born and Sheerness. There was a decent one in Dartford recently, which was highly successful. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. Do you have a contact me? Yeah, in, in Dartford. Um, but for the uh, BC, yeah, yeah, I can get you. If you yeah, if you can I'll forward you know, information on yeah. it, would be useful. Is there anything else anybody would like to discuss or talk about? The fact that the Stephen and the White Highway is having a Stephen Dale Festival is coming in the county. I don't see what I'm talking about. And if there's any complaints about noise at night, we will run trains up till probably midnight. <laughs> 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 and you're perfectly allowed to do so. <laughs> So is it meters? Um, yes. Agenda item 11, matters referred to the area committee by service committee. Um, there were none for the state set. Um, item 12, matters uh, referred to service committees by chairs of... Um, so we've not had anything that's come up that 
uh, this evening that um, members uh, have asked to be referred to the service committee chairs for this meeting, but there are other action points that yeah. I can. Yeah. Can I therefore defer the meeting closed at 8.35? Thank you, sure. yeah. 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 And I will get better. <laughs> <laughs>